Hello, welcome along to Sportsbet TV. Paul Alster here with you once again, and I'm really excited about this week's uh, tipping because we're going to be focusing for the first two bulletin this week on the Punchestown Festival, which is always fabulous. No two ways about uh, um, describing it. It really is a fabulous backup to the Cheltenham Festival and in some ways is no less good. Um, if you're new to the service, before I forget, do remember to press the subscribe button just below this screen and then you'll be able to keep in touch with all my bulletins where I specialise in searching and seeking out uh, big priced winners and we've had a few very big ones over the course of the last few months and I'm hoping that we might pick up a, a big price winner or two and indeed uh, some big priced placed horses at Punchestown because with it being so competitive and the handicap hurdles and such having 20 to 25 runners, many bookmakers will be paying uh, five, six, even seven places. So it's always good to shop around. And another tip is if you don't already know, uh, to bet with a bookmaker that helps you the best odds guaranteed. Uh, that means that you'll get paid the SP if it's bigger than the price you take. So do bear all those factors in mind. And if you're betting each way on these selections, then of course, if you're betting a 25 to one shot that comes third, it's as good as a five to one winner. So um, I have four selections for you over the first two days. That's Tuesday and Wednesday of Punchestown. Very quickly, I'll go through what happened on Saturday where uh, we had um, a little bit of a shout here and there, didn't we? Because on to victory ran very well in the first race at Sundown, the handicap hurdle. He was a good third. We'd recommended him at 13 to two. He was very heavily backed. El Presente, well, what a race he ran in the Bet365 Gold Cup. I pointed out there were three or four horses that I could hardly separate on form, and three of them came in the first four. The only one I didn't mention was a horse that actually was first past the post, did all the damage, and eventually was demoted. It was a controversial decision, but I don't think the stewards had any decision other than to throw him out. He certainly hampered the horse that very unluckily finished third and uh, should have really won the race, the Christian Williams uh, five-year-old. But El Presente, in the end, only beaten a length. Uh, he was um, an 11 to one shot each way fourth. So that was a nice uh, little profit there. Now I did put up a win bet, but there was a proviso that it had to be nine to four or bigger. It had already been back from nine to two when I recorded the bulletin. I said, if it's shorter than nine to four, then no bet. Well, they steamed into it again, didn't they? Over at Leicester in the last on Saturday, the horse was Chris Wall's King Mania and she absolutely bolted in. She won very easily, but she was only 11 to eight in the end. So I can't claim it as a winning tip because I did say don't back it if it's anything less than the nine to four. Then there were two other selections. One was Long Press, who ran well for a long way at Sandown before getting tired. And then at very big odds, and it attracted market support. We had Global Exceed in the last race of the day, the amateur riders race. And I'm afraid it all went wrong for us at the stalls because uh, the jockey uh, removed the blindfold late and uh, lost about five or six lengths on the field. And uh, that was game over, really. She was always uh, chasing shadows after that. So we'll look out for that one um, next time, possibly with a, a different jockey on next time. Let's go then to Punchestown. And as I've mentioned, five days of very, very high class jump racing. The British are going to do well to get a winner on the board here, I think, as, as we saw at uh, Cheltenham, they've been outclassed in the National Hunt Sphere by the Irish uh, this season and really over the last couple of seasons. And my very first selection is in the first race of the meeting. It's on Tuesday, uh, the 27th of April. The 340 is a 25 runner, a two mile novices handicap hurdle. I don't half pick them, you know. And there are loads with chances, loads of them. And I'm sure loads of them have been laid out for this as well, because there's big money in all these races. Now you should be looking to get at least six places with your bookmaker, so remember to shop around. Um, I, I do think that Low Dunn has got a chance for Denise Foster. It's potentially well handicapped, and she's got Jordan Gainford on, who's a very good conditional rider, claiming seven. It's one of many with potential uh, who could easily be better than their current handicap marks. But my selection is number nine on the card. It's called Hallowed Star. It's trained by the uh, ebullient Shark Hanlon, 
and the Mount of Jody McGarvey, who's having a wonderful season, including riding grade one winners, one of which was for the shark himself just uh, recently. Now, Hallowed Star's interesting. He won a Tipperary bumper in June on good, good to yielding ground, similar conditions to what uh, we expect on Tuesday. Then he was second in a Galway bumper shortly after that. He had a break of about five months before reappearing on Boxing Day, making his hurdles bow in testing ground. And he ran a really good fifth of 20 to wide receiver, who's proved to be a, a fairly decent horse. So that was a really good start over hurdles the Hallowed Star on Boxing Day. Now, about six weeks later on the 4th of February, um, he ran at Down Royal in heavy ground and he was second there of 18 to decimation. Again, really good effort on ground that was probably softer than he would have uh, ideally wanted. And then they ran him again on March the 13th, another six week break, and he was beaten just a short head by Robinstown at Navan, over two miles in a maiden hurdle, again, in very testing conditions. So the horse has showed that regardless of the conditions, he can run well, but connections have made it clear they think he's a horse who uh, is probably best on a fairly sound surface. Now, Hallowed Star started off his days with John Gosden, but he never actually raced uh, for the great uh, British trainer. He didn't manage to get him onto the race course, even though they paid 110 thousand guineas for him. He's by see the star, so he's bred to be very, very useful indeed. And uh, Shark Hanlon's done really well. He picked him up for a song, maybe I think it was 7,000 guineas or something. And he said very early on, this could be one of the best horses he's ever trained. So it may not live up to those very high uh, expectations, but I think it's a horse who will win good races and it's handicapped to go really well. Uh, on this, it's handicapped bow. And at the time of recording um, on uh, Monday uh, at lunchtime, really struggling to get a prize for this race. And uh, none of the bookmakers are prepared to uh, risk it. I'm guessing he's gonna be around 14 to one. That would be my mark, 14 to one each way, uh, hallowed star. It'll be really interesting to see which way the market goes with this one, whether they go shorter or whether with so many other eye-catching horses uh, he, he's uh, put in at a longer price. So that's Hallowed Star, 3.40 on Tuesday at Punchestown. Now, the second of my two selections on Tuesday at Punchestown is in there, 4.50. Again, 25 runners in a two-mile handicap hurdle. And once again, you should be looking for six places being offered. Now, to make matters even more complicated than they already are with 25 runners, J.P. McManus, Ireland's top owner and for many times a uh, Britain's top owner as well. He's got five runners in this and the great Willie Mullins has got seven runners. So these trainers and owners setting as a puzzle as to know which one of their horde of horses is actually their preferred choice. But I'm not going with any of those. I'm going with an old favourite of ours, uh, Mr. Noel Mead and Sean Flanagan team up uh, with Jesse Evans and regular followers of my service will know that I tipped their horse on the opening day of the Cheltenham Festival, Jeff Kidder, and he only went and won at 8.080 to 1. It was a result that's kept us in clover and we're still uh, well ahead on top of many other big winners that I've tipped, but that was a wonderful moment. And I'm pretty hopeful that Noel Mead has got another one here that can go well in a big field handicap hurdle. Jesse Evans is the name of the horse. He's first time in a handicap. He's run seven times. He's won two. Uh, he won uh, a bumper at Listowel in September and then won on his hurdles bow in a maiden event at Gowran Park in October. And then uh, three weeks later, they switched him to the flat. He's got ability as this horse. And he was a good second over a mile and three quarters in a maiden at Navan, just beaten half a length. And then a couple of weeks after that, they showed how much they think of him by putting him straight up into a grade three novices hurdle, where unfortunately, another horse bumped into him going into the first flight and he unseated his rider. So that one you can completely write off. Now they waited about six or seven weeks after that. And he reappeared at the uh, Christmas meeting at Leopardstown and what do you know, they didn't go for a grade three there, they went up to grade one class and he ran a perfectly respectable race, although not good enough, when seventh to the very, very smart Appreciate It, who of course bolted in at the Cheltenham Festival, and Bally Adam, who's another grade one performer. So this is really good form on soft ground. 
Uh, but this is a horse who I think is better on spring ground. Now he had a, a little break after that. He ran on the 28th of February in a grade two novice hurdle. Now this form is what has really turned me on to him for this race because this grade two um, saw victory go to a horse called Echoes in Rain, who has since won another grade two by 15 lengths. And that is uh, really good form. The second horse was Belfast Banter. And Belfast Banter went on to win the county hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival. And then I'm sure you all remember, he won the top novices hurdle grade one at uh, Aintree for Peter Fahey and Kevin Sexton. So this form is just red hot. Now, Jesse Evans was only beaten four lengths by Belfast Banter, who was second. Jesse Evans was fourth. And the form of that is absolutely top notch. And Belfast Banter um, is rated, I think, 140 plus now. Uh, Echoes in Rain, I think, is rated mid to high 140s. And Jesse Evans gets in here off 127 on his handicap bow. So I believe on a point of handicapping, if he's at his best and runs to the form he did against Belfast Banter and Echoes in Rain, then I think he's got a really, really good each way chance. Of course, of course you need luck in running when there's 25 horses and there's 24 others in possibly getting in your way and they could fall or hamper you, as we saw when he was unseated at the first on one of his early hurdles outings. But granted a clear run, I think with six places on offer each way, that 12 to one, which is a general offer, uh, that one is priced up. I think 12 to one is a good price for Jesse Evans. Now I have noted that very early on, he was put in at 16s and they've taken that. So it would not surprise me to see more money come for Jesse Evans. Uh, I think his form does rather speak for itself. So Jesse Evans in the Punchestown 450 on Tuesday, 12 to 1 each, my six places is my second selection. And then I'll take you on to Wednesday. Now, this first selection, we're rather shooting in the dark here because there are no prices up. And it is Wednesday, the 28th of April, the 340. Once again, is the first race on day two of the Punchestown Festival, where the going is forecast good to yielding. Uh, and this time it's a two and a half mile handicap hurdle. And you've guessed it. There are 25 runners once again. Now this race is sponsored by the Adair Manor. Uh, it's called the Adair Manor Opportunity Hurdle. Uh, regular followers will know that I broadcast regularly uh, on a, a number of internet uh, betting sites uh, on their racing radio services on Irish racing. So I keep a very close eye on the Irish form. Now Adair Manor is the home of JP McManus. It is a stately home for Ireland's most successful owner a breeder and gambler. And his Adair Manor uh, organization sponsor a series of races for conditional jockeys throughout the season in Ireland. And they're very generous sponsors indeed. So it doesn't come as a huge surprise to see that JP McManus has four horses running in a race, which his uh, company uh, sponsors. So that is interesting. Now of the horses that aren't owned by JP, the top weight is unbeaten. He's called Mount Leinster Gold and he could be anything, but this is much harder than anything he's tackled yet. The bottom weight is a horse called the Great White, big galumphing grey, uh, trained by Dermot McLaughlin, who of course won the Irish National with a huge prize runner. Now I saw the Great White win last week at Limerick and he was pretty impressive and he gets in here off bottom weight. This is a much tougher race, but I wouldn't be at all surprised to see the Great White run really well. But I take you back to the J.P. McManus quartet of horses that he has in here. And they are called, uh, one is called Guiri, another one is Bay Hill, uh, the third is called Tesseract, and the fourth is Majorca. And I've had a look through all these four and they've all got plenty of chance. Don't worry about it. They've all got chances. And some of them have been brought along steadily this season. Others have only had one or two runs and could easily be ahead of their marks. And it, after much debate uh, with myself, uh, which is probably a trade for which you can be locked up, um, I've come down on the side of Majorca, uh, who is trained by Aidan Howard and is the amount of Luke Carberry who claims four pounds. Now, uh, I, we don't have an image of Luke Carberry, so we put up a picture of the great JP McManus who owns the horse to go along with Aidan Howard. But 
he's a Carberry, isn't he? So he's going to be able to ride. He's probably been riding before he could walk. Uh, Tommy Carberry, of course, the great man of the 70s. And of course, uh, in more recent times, Paul and Peter Carberry and Nina uh, as well. They are one of the great uh, riding families. So I'm sure he can ride a horse, uh, Luke Carberry. And uh, Majurka is, for me, a fascinating runner. He was a promising horse in his early days in France, uh, where he went steeplechasing at a young age. And then he made his Irish debut on Boxing Day of 2018. And they threw him straight into a grade one. So they obviously had very high regard for this horse. And it was a grade one novice's chase. He was un in touch in this grade one at Limerick, going really well, just about four or five lengths off the lead when he fell at the third last. That was the race won by Hardline, in which Get a Bird was beaten half a length. And those horses are rated 150 plus. Uh, now, they, he reappeared just four weeks after that in early January of 2019 and finished fifth in a grade three on testing ground. A grade three that included some very good horses, Bally Ward, Chris's Dream, the poor old The Conditional, who we lost uh, uh, just a few months ago, and Discorama, who ran so well in the Grand National. And then something obviously went wrong with this horse because he was off for 735 days. That's just a little more than two years so he had an issue and he was off until he reappeared on the 31st of January, uh, just uh, three months ago. And they ran him in a two mile Nace handicap hurdle. Now that two miles would have been very sharp for him. It was on heavy ground as well, which probably would not have been ideal. And the comment for the horse, and I've watched the race through a few times, uh, the, the racing post comment was something like rear, some headway to out, never near to challenge which as a former race reader, I read between the lines, having put in these type of comments so many times over the years of saying this horse um, probably needed the outing and he wasn't knocked about and he'll be better next time. And next time is on Wednesday at 3.40 at Punchestown. He's actually been dropped two pounds since that run. He's back up to two and a half miles. I think the triple suit, he runs off 121. And when you take off Luke Carberry's four pound claim, he's gonna run off 117. Now, given the fact that he was taking on uh, grade one and grade three horses on his only two starts prior to that very long absence, running off essentially 117 means that he could have a really big chance. So I'm with Majurka. There are no prices up. And I would expect that a lot of people would overlook him because of his form figures are not good. So I'm guessing 25 to one each way is gonna be there or there about. If it's shorter, then you know the money's down. And if it's longer, then all being well, he'll still run well and will make uh, even more if he gets a place or even better if he wins. So that is Majorca 340 Punches Town on Wednesday. My guess is 25 to one each way for six places for JP McManus, Aidan Howard and Luke Carberry. And then on to my final selection of the first two days at Punches Town. And this is my first non-handicap. It's the 520 on Punches Town, which is the grade one Irish mirror novices hurdle. It's over three miles and it's an absolute cracking race. There are eight runners. So it means that each way is an option uh, for three places. And the race revolves to a great extent around the grade one Albert Bartlett hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival last month. Now that was won in superb fashion uh, by Gavin Cromwell's Vanillier. Now he really did bolt up. He won, he was probably one of the most impressive winners of the race we've seen in recent years. And already he's among the favorites for next year's Stayers hurdle. Now in that race, Streets of Doyen, who I tipped, stayed on really well to be third, but he wasn't good enough to land a blow on Vanillier, while Statler, who also reopposes, was fourth. Um, I'm not sure either of those will be able to reverse the places with Vanillier, assuming that Vanillier runs to the same sort of level. The one horse who on figures does have a chance um, currently is Galopin de Champ, who's trained by Willie Mullins and is the mount of Paul Townend. And he's rated the equal of Vanillier at 150 because he won the Martin Pipe hurdle over two and a half miles at the Cheltenham Festival off 142 and he won it in really impressive fashion. So it's interesting to see him going back up to three miles. But the last time this race was run, it was won by Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore. And they won it with a horse you might have heard of. 
His name was Minella Indo. And as we know, Minella Endo went on to win the Gold Cup just a few weeks ago in fantastic style. So Henry and Rachel know what is required to win this race, which has made me think that even though on the face of it, of her bare form, tell me something girl um, wouldn't appear an obvious stayer at three miles. I think they believe she will stay. Rachel Blackmore on board, the great Rachel, of course, won the Grand National subsequently. And Henry de Bromhead, who trained the national winner, has trained everything else worth winning uh, this season. Now, Tell Me Something Girl is a tremendously talented mare. She's won uh, two and two miles, two and a half mile mares hurdles earlier in the season. Uh, pretty good form as well, beating the like of Darren's Hope, who's won uh, staying graded races uh, over further. On February the 7th, after a break, she came back to run an excellent third to heaven helpers. And that was in a two and a quarter mile red heart, 100,000 euro handicap hurdle. And of course, Heaven Helpers, and these are where all the form lines are tying in, won the Coral Cup over two miles five at the Cheltenham Festival, won it by nine lengths, absolutely hacked up. So the form lines of that race uh, are excellent. But of course, at the Cheltenham Festival itself, Tell Me Something Girl herself dropped back in trip to two miles one, and she came with a tremendous run to win the grade two Dawn Run Mare's Novices Hurdle. Now, that was a, a cracking effort. Back in fourth place was Sky Ace, and Sky Ace for the Shark Hanlon has gone on to win a grade one hurdle since then, so the form is very good. Now, in an interview earlier in the season, Henry de Bromhead said he really thought that Tell Me Something Girl was going to be able to stay three miles without a problem. So I think the fact that they've won uh, at the Cheltenham Festival over two miles one just shows what a talent she is. And I think they'll try and slot in and bide their time and try and save as much as they can. If they're within striking distance going to the last, this mare has a proper turn of foot. And of course she gets the mare's allowance, the seven pounds as well. And on a point of handicapping on her official rating, she's very closely tied in uh, with the favorite Vanillier. So, 13 to 2, the best price on the early odds put up by Bet Victor. I think that's a good offer. I know William Hills and 888 and Sporting Index go 6 to 1 as well. But 13 to 2, Bet Victor for Tell Me Something Girl each well uh, to give the great Rachel and Henry de Bromhead another big winner uh, this season. So those are my four for the first two days of the Punchestown Festival. Let's hope they run really well. I'll be back on Wednesday with my tips for Thursday and Friday at Punchestown. And let's hope we enjoy a really good week. Whatever happens, we're gonna see some fantastic racing and let's hope that all the horses and jockeys uh, come back safely. I'll be back with you uh, Wednesday, late afternoon, early evening. Let's enjoy Punchestown 2021. Bye-bye for now.